All right, Shalom. Want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Tiles of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And this one is going to be another quick one. Uh, Lord's willing, straight to the point. And uh, more importantly, hopefully edifying to those of the hopeful elect. All right, this is uh, in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and uh, starting at verse 9. It says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh. Now, it didn't say peoples, all right, with an S on the end. It said people, which represents a nation of people. Okay. Which that nation is Yasha Allah. Okay. He prints power. All right. Which are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native and Seminole Indians. All right. West Indians and so-called Haitians. These are the people of Yahweh. So it says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh. So just want to look up this word rest. See what it says. Strong's G 4520. Sabatis Mas. Sabatis Mas. Okay, it's a Greek word called Sabatis Mas. And it says a keeping Sabbath. Right? Because the Lord said that we had to rest on the Sabbath and keep it holy. Alright, to remain from our own pleasures. You know, that's law. Which the Sabbath comes in on a new moon. All right. Every month, the um, Sabbath comes in on a new day. It's not from Friday night to Saturday night all year round. All right. That is false. The Sabbath comes in on the new moon. All right. <clears throat> every new moon is the Sabbath. And every seven days after that is a Sabbath until the new moon or new month comes in at evening. So anyway, it says the blessed rest from toils and troubles look for in the age to come by the true worshipers of Yahweh and true Christians. All right. So really, really, the true Christians are the Israelites. OK. And the true worshipers are the Israelites, starting with the prophets. So it says the blessed rest. What is that blessed rest? It has to be salvation. Because right now, we're not in our rest. All right. We're still going through toils and troubles. And there's a time of Jacob's trouble, which approaches. And that's going to be determined, you know, whether you are a man of the Lord or not. All right. So it says the blessed rest from toils and troubles look for in the age to come by the true worshipers of Yahweh and true Christians. All right. So this rest. Let me just see Strong's definition. Right. Oh, it says as a type of heaven. As a type of heaven. And right now we're not in heaven. We're in hell. All right. Esau is ruling the world. And right now he wants to go into this new world, which is um, everyone being microchipped. <laughs> OK, which is the mark of the beast. So, yes. All right. As a type of heaven. We're not in heaven. We're waiting upon Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, to fulfill prophecy, to take us into that heaven, to change us, to activate that new covenant. All right. So yeah. So this salvation, excuse me, this rest represents salvation. So Hebrews four and nine. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh, for he that is entered into his rest he also have ceased from his own works as Yahweh did from his let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief so we got to work for this we got to work for this salvation all right it's all about you know putting your hand to the plow and not looking back you know, Yahweh Shai said, he that put his hand to the plow and looketh back is not fit for the kingdom. You're not fit to be of the election, you know, of the first resurrection with Yahweh Shai. 
because obviously if you're an Israelite and on this side you despise this truth you're going to be put to death and brought back up in the kingdom perfect as a newborn babe all right but the election that's chosen at one third okay they're going to be resting with Yahweh Shai being a part of the first resurrection as is written in Revelations 20 and 6. So let's get to verse 10, uh, 11. It says, Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Because if you're not laboring in this truth and enduring, what happens is you're going to lose faith. You know, faith is exercised by, by your works. When you put the work in, it proves your faith. Uh, well, also, I must say faith is a gift that is given to one of the Lord's elect from the Heavenly Father. All right. Ephesians 2 and 8. Faith is a gift. But let's just say faith on a level of things where you where where you put your mind into and you train. And then you go compete for whatever you're training for. You have faith that you will do well. Because maybe you study, all right, or maybe you put in the work uh, day in and day out. So when it's time to take a test, you know, you know you're gonna pass. You have faith that you're gonna pass, all right. And that's on a um, a carnal tip, all right, because our faith is spiritual. You know, we look not at the things which are seen, but but at the things that which are not seen, all right. Which is um, uh, believing in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So it says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, at least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. All right. So you end up being a non-believer over time. You know, this world takes a, a toll on our flesh. And if you're not occupied and strong in the faith and believing in the Lord, the world is going to overtake you. It's going to get the best of you. It's always a distraction in the world. That will distract you from this truth You know that's why we have to be uh, Rooted in the truth So verse 12 For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful And sharpening any two-edged sword Piercing even the dividing of the sunder Of the soul and spirit And of the joints and marrow And the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart And that's how powerful the word of the Lord is Alright It's, it's uh, quick, powerful It's sharper than any two-edged sword Okay two-edged sword cuts on both sides you swing it you know if you got a two-edged sword and you swing it you know in in, in all different directions is going to cut on both sides so you know you could say that this word it cuts it cuts us if we're not right and it also cuts others who are not right all right it says piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit meaning it cuts into your spirit the Lord gets into your uh, your mind. He gets into your conscience. Okay. It says, and the joints of the marrow and a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the joints and marrow is your bones, meaning the Lord make you move. All right. You got those who will hear the word of the Lord and they, and they, you know, they get all crazy because them demons that's on them. You know, be activating their, their their mouth to move, their tongue to speak, you know, for them to move their hands and jump up and scream. All right. Say whatever comes to their mind, you know, shaming themselves. OK, uh, let's say on the righteous tip, those who hear the word, you know, they're, you know, being lightened. All right. It, it makes them to uh, it puts that fiery spirit on them to move, to be excited. You know, so it says, and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Lord gets into your mind. All right. And he makes you think. It says, neither is there any uh, creature, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Yahweh Shai, the son of Yahweh, let us hold fast our profession. All right, which gets into confession. All right, we're confessing and, wit and as witnesses, professing this truth, this gospel. All right, let me uh, 
Let's see what it says in this quick dictionary here. It says a profession is a type of job that requires advanced education or training. All right. So the prophets have a job and they have this job to what? Teach and prophesize. All right. It says verse 15, for we have not in high priests, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of, of grace that we may be that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need all right so yahweh shai went through everything that we're going to go through and everything that we're going through now and it says verse 15 but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin so yahweh shai showed us the way <clears throat> he remained with integrity and endured all the way to the end he made it possible for us to get back you know to get back what we lost and that's our inheritance okay starting with our identity okay starting with knowing who we are and what's the lord's name the father and the son verse 16 let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace and, and why we will come boldly because we will what be blameless and unspotted you know if you know that you don't have nothing to hide then you're going to come boldly you know scriptures say um a wicked man uh fleeth when no man pursue roughly paraphrasing all right a wicked man will run away when therefore nobody's chasing him you know police coming around the block you know, a dude, yo, man, I'll be, yo, man, let me, let me get over here. I'm, I'm, I'll be back. Let me get out of here. You know, why, why, why are he running? Because he's a wicked man. All right. A, a righteous man come boldly because he has nothing to hide. All right. And uh, the elect, you know, we have nothing to hide, but we ultimately have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that the Lord is going to cover us. All right. So it says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy so it's all about mercy you know these works that we do to, to strive for that rest that salvation you know to be a part of that number we're looking for what mercy all right and the lord said he's not forgetful of our works not that we'll be delivered or saved because of our works but it is you know our spiritual bank account where the lord said he's not forgetful and that shows our work and labor of love toward Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and his truth. You know? It says, and I find, it says, and find grace to help in a time of need. So grace is temporary. Grace is not, you know, permanent. Grace is for a temporary matter. You know, we need grace in this day in order to get to the kingdom. We're not perfect, but we strive. All right, so let me read that one more time. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And we sure are going to need it. All right. Especially when they come in like a flood. Okay. <sighs> when they go to demonizing and persecuting brothers, you're going to be looking for that mercy. You're going to be looking for that grace. All right. That grace so that we can get to what? Salvation. We can be delivered to that rest. All right. Which is heaven that paradise on earth you know scriptures say the lord told the brothers how to pray the disciples our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven all right so that heaven is uh the heavens which uh the order in the fourth dimension where the heavenly father rests um, with the angels he's bringing that order down on earth uh, with Yahweh Shai, all right, and to set things, uh, uh, let's say right side up, to set things in order on earth, which earth is a heaven as well. So, I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakudash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.